Welcome to another fashion and style episode of Anoki Daily Spotlight TV. Today I'll be opening the doors to the world of ties to show you all the tips and tricks you'll need the next time you rock one. So today we're going to navigate the world of ties. With so many options in the market today, it can be sometimes really tricky to figure out which tie goes with what and basically how to match your tie to the right shirt. So today we're going to break it down. Starting off, you need to know about the four types of ties. So let's start right away with the knit tie. A knit tie is a great option in any man's wardrobe and I recommend you should at least own one. They are great because they can be dressed up or dressed down and they're completely seasonless so you can wear them all the way from spring and summer into fall and winter. So when you're dressing it casually, what I would recommend is just put it with a nice casual shirt, something uh, like a denim shirt, pair of jeans and even throw on a cardigan. Keep it simple and, and effortless. So let's move over to the silk tie. Now right off the bat, let me say, silk ties were never designed to be worn casually. So forget about pairing it with jeans or chinos or whatever it is that you have in your closet. Keep it in the formal aesthetic that it was designed for. So when wearing a silk tie, preferably pair it with a jacket. Now it could be a blazer, but a suit is always the better option. When wearing a silk tie, um, always realize that the options available to you are immense. The sheen should not be off-putting. It's a great way to anchor your suit and a great way to add character to your suit. Lastly, with the amount of options that are available in the market today, this is not your dad's tie. You've got colors, you've got patterns, and they're really an endless choice for both your corporate setting and your formal setting. Now let's move over to the next style of tie, which is the skinny tie. Often referred to the maverick of all ties, the skinny tie is actually a great youthful tie that many people are starting to adopt nowadays. Now if you were in Europe, chances are you had adopted this style decades ago. Now skinny ties aren't for everybody, they're usually designed for more uh, modern silhouettes so when you're pairing it with suits, I strongly recommend looking for suits that have a more modern fit and narrow lapels because that complements the narrow style of the, the skinny tie. And one last thing that I would love to say is that skinny ties are very much proportional to the body type. If you are a huskier guy, that doesn't mean you can't wear a slim tie, but a skinny tie may not be the most ideal option. Once again, matching the tie to the space of your lapel is a great way to judge if a skinny tie works best for you or not. And the last style that we have, which is great actually for the fall, are wool ties. They offer a really great combination between a classic silk tie silhouette and a knit tie because the texture of the fabric itself really lends a lot to the character of your outfit. Now, the great thing about wool ties is that they are very much transitional. So you can wear them casually as well as formally. So really the options are limitless when it comes to the wool tie um, in terms of pairing it with anything and everything. So now I'm going to take you through the various types of knots available, um, obviously starting off with the ever classic Windsor knot. Now the Windsor knot is very large and, and quite chunky in fact, so it's quite limiting in terms of the types of shirts that you can wear it with. Preferably if you've got a widespread collared shirt, that's what the Windsor knot is most um, applicable to. So the Pratt knot is actually dependent on the type of tie that you wear. Given its symmetry and the fold, it's better reserved for silk-based ties or thin cotton ties. As you get into slightly thicker fabrics such as wools or even knit ties, the Pratt really loses all its charm because it gets really bulky and really, really heavy around the neck. Which is why we're going to now move into the third knot, which is the four in hand. And as GQ would put it, if there's one knot that you should know, it is the four in hand. 
Not only is it the most versatile, but it's also the easiest one to learn. The great thing about the four in hand is the way that the knot is based, regardless of whether you're going with a casual silk tie or a knit tie, it looks great. It never looks overly bulky, it keeps the silhouette very narrow, and depending on the collar that you're wearing, it just is universal. I hope you enjoyed this fashion episode. For more of our shows, you can check us out at anokimedia.com and our YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can always interact with us on Facebook and Twitter.